yesterday a blockbuster fixture occurred at Old Trafford as Manchester United hosted Chelsea at Old Trafford. This game ended with a 2-1 win for Manchester United, though the XG showcased that Manchester United should have won this game with more than four goals. So Mauricio Pochettino faced Eric Ten Hag for the third time in his managerial career. Eric Ten Hag was going through a troubling start at Manchester United and the at Manchester United, but uh, this win will really change the mood at the club. So we move directly to look at how both teams line up. We start with the home side, Manchester United, and Manchester United lined up in their usual 4-2-3-1 system. This time, Amrabat came in midfield and played alongside Scott McTominay, with Lindelof and Harry Maguire making the two centre-back pairing, with Dalot and Luke Shaw playing in the wide areas. Ganacho retained his position, with Anthony playing on the right, with Bruno playing in behind Hoyland, who made a return. The visitors Chelsea also lined up in a 4-2-3-1 system with Mark Kukurela coming in for Bania Schiele who played with as four centre-backs against Brighton. Um, Cole Palmer came in for the suspended Kono Gallagher and Mudrik and Raheem Sterling played down the wide areas with Nicholas Jackson leading the line. So before we start our analysis, I want to remind you again to kindly subscribe to our second channel. The link is in the description area. In this channel, we'll be doing more in-depth tactical analysis on teams that are not Chelsea, such as Brighton, the project at Newcastle, Aston Villa, Manchester City, Manchester United, Liverpool, and other teams across Europe. Do not forget to subscribe. And uh, before we start our analysis, also subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. So let's start our analysis with analyzing Chelsea. Since Chelsea had majority of possession and actually a lot of uh, instances in this game happened when Chelsea had possession and we're going to see how. So in our tactical board, we have how Chelsea tried to build up by dropping two of their centre-backs uh, alongside Robert Sanchez with their full-backs starting wide. So Manchester United were quite impressive in how they pressed throughout the game. Very, very impressive. So they pressed Chelsea in a 4-2-3-1 system with their wingers going wide and McTominay pushing from midfield so that Manchester United could press in a 4-1-4-1 system. Hoyland in this clip you can see very well is preventing the ball to go to Thiago Silva because Thiago Silva is competent on the ball and is forcing the ball to be played to disassi. Here again you can see Chelsea in their first phases of possession and you can see that narrow 4-2-3-1 system. Hoyland pressing the two centre-backs while the two wingers covering Chelsea's full-backs and Bruno, on, Bruno tying up both the... Uh, Moises Caicedo and McTominay on Enzo Fernandez. Palmer has been picked by Amrabat and Chelsea cannot progress further. So Chelsea attempted to play the ball to Enzo Fernandez and you can see immediately McTominay is applying pressure on him. So McTominay tries to play this Hollywood pass towards Marco Curella, but here again you can see that Ganacho is keen to win the ball. So uh, Manchester United were quite impressive with how they pressed Chelsea, forcing the ball to be played on one centre-back and employing an aggressive midfield press. So all the midfield options and the wide options for Chelsea were tied up as Manchester United's back four tracked Chelsea's front three, enabling Manchester United to be quite great in their out-of-possession phase. You can see here Colwell has received the ball and immediately Anthony is putting him under pressure and Hoyland is covering the back pass to Thiago Silva. Hoyland needs to be credited a lot. In this game, he really worked well. His main aim was to cut one side of uh, play and forcing the play down the right-hand side. Since Kukurela was playing out of position, Ganacho was so quick to spring out and press him. And this will see him play the ball back or attempt a ball forward where Luke Shaw would easily win the ball off Raheem Sterling. And this will now trigger Manchester United to enter into that transition phase that Eric Ten Hag likes. And that is when Manchester United are transiting 
and catching out teams out of possession. And this thing happened time and time again for Chelsea. Credit goes to Manchester United's fullbacks who held on to Chelsea's wingers touch tight and Chelsea could not move an inch. Now, in more settled progressive phases of play, Manchester United maintained their narrow 4-1-4-1 press, with Hoyland's main aim cutting the pass to Thiago Silva and forcing the ball to be played to Disasi, where Bruno Fernandes would advance to press Disasi while using his cover shadow to cover Caicedo. And if Chelsea decided to go along, Lindelof and Maguire time and time again won the ball of Nicholas Jackson and Chelsea's really, really struggled. We know Paul Cole Palmer likes to drop deep to receive the ball directly from the keeper, but Amrabat was also quite strong in following Cole Palmer deep and winning the ball off him. This 3v3 matchup in midfield really created a lot of problems for Chelsea, and the position of Manchester United's forwards close to each other enabled them to have these transition phases. In the first 30, to, in the first 30 minutes, Manchester United should have been 4 nil up. Here you can see uh, Chelsea attempting to build up. Caicedo has dropped into the back line. Bruno Fernandes has now pushed on to Caicedo. And you can see Hoyland is covering the, the, the space in midfield. Here again you can see Caicedo has time on the ball. And you can immediately see that the ball is being played to Sterling. But Sterling is being tracked by Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw wins the ball of Raheem Sterling and now Manchester United are in that transition phase with Bruno Fernandes having options on either side to either play Anthony or Ganacho. but Manchester United became wasteful in this opportunity. Here again you can see uh, the ball has been played to Cole Palmer but you can see how Amrabat is so quick to spring out onto Cole Palmer. Amrabat wins the ball of Cole Palmer and now Manchester United have close to four players running at three Chelsea defenders. And I'm saying time and time again that Manchester United should have been 4 nil up by 30 minutes because Chelsea lost possession in very dangerous areas on the pitch. Anthony receives this ball here and rather than nutmegging Thiago Silva and being through on goal, he attempts a shot and Sanchez scores this goal. Here again you can see Manchester United have won the ball in transition phases through their midfield pressing traps and now immediately they are engaging to go and score against Chelsea. So in some instances Chelsea managed to bypass the first line of pressure or it was mainly Manchester United deciding to sit in a mid block especially after they went 1-0 up. So this is how Chelsea were playing in the progressive phases of play. Hoyland was very important in forcing Chelsea to play down the right. And since Kukurela was playing out of position, his only pass will be played towards Raheem Sterling where Luke Shaw will effectively switch and win the ball off Raheem Sterling. And uh, the role of Amrabat was key since he tracked Cole Palmer in whatever position he played. Luke Shaw would win the ball off Raheem Sterling. And now Ganacho, together with Anthony and Bruno Fernandes and the pace of Hoyland, will be making runs in Chelsea's backline. So, in some instances, we also started to see now Manchester uh, Chelsea being forced to play the pass backwards. But Manchester United were quite uh, proactive in their press and they will press the ball, especially Disasi, who looked clueless on the ball, who will now play the ball back to Robert Sanchez. This again now will push Manchester United forward. Sanchez will attempt these passes in midfield where Manchester United's midfielders in McTominay will win the ball off Chelsea's midfield. So what we started to see now is uh, Manchester United uh, allowing to, uh, Disasi to receive the ball and attempt these passes in Sterling who was dropping deep. But again, we saw the effectiveness of Luke Shaw. Since now Manchester United had an extra player in the back line, their fullbacks will be allowed to drop deep to come and try to cover their Chelsea wingers. And here Manchester United will win the ball and immediately engage in quick transitions. Here you can see the ball is being played to Disasi. Disasi has time and space on the ball. Cole Palmer has decided to drop deep to receive the ball, but you can see that Amrabat is having an eye on him. So, Chelsea were also quite wasteful in the attacking third. 
Colwill is not a left back and therefore even when progressing high up the pitch could not make any use in the attacking threat down the flanks and uh, this made Chelsea attack less down the left hand side. Also another problem with Chelsea they were just passing the ball sideways and backwards and Kukurela not overlapping Palmer down the right this made it easy for Luke Shaw to defend down the left. So let's see what Manchester United did. Uh, in my opinion, Manchester United played well, but I don't think they were so great. I can just say that uh, Chelsea was so, so poor. But there are some key tactics that Manchester United employed. In my preview, I explained how Manchester United like to build up, and this is aided by Onana acting as the third centre-back, while one centre-back started deep, and this was Harry Maguire playing as the pivot. So Onana in this position with uh, wide, play, uh, wide defenders playing alongside him, we saw Chelsea employing Mudrik and Raheem Sterling to move to press both Luke Shaw and Diego Dalot. Now, the main problem is that Manchester United overloaded Chelsea's midfield, and in this case, you could see that the composure that Onana has compared to what Sanchez has is the great asset that enabled Manchester United to constantly build through play, uh, Chelsea's pressure. Onana here has time and space on the ball. Jackson is lethargic in pressing him. Maguire is free and uh, Chelsea don't know how to move on to press him. So Mudrik is very, very uh, slow to come and cover. The, go the ball is played to Lindelof, and now you can see Manchester United have numerical advantages. Uh, Caicedo and Enzo have been picked up by both McTominay and Bruno Fernandes. So Manchester United's main key strategy in build-up is to have these two V1s in the wide areas against opposition's fullbacks. The passing range of Onana enables them to play these balls, especially to aerially dominant uh, midfielders like Scott McTominay, who can receive the ball and lay it to Anton. So what did Manchester United do when they were in settled possession? We need to understand what uh, Manchester United did in settled possession. So in settled possession, uh, we know Manchester United like to build with a 2-3-5 with one single pivot, wide centre-backs on either side of the pivot and an attacking uh, five-man attack. And I had explained this in my predicted um, my preview that this is how Manchester United built. So Hoyland will be drifting in, in between uh, Kukurela and Disasi while uh, Scott McTominay will be playing between Thiago Silva and uh, Colwin. This would create spaces for Ganacho to receive the ball. And when Ganacho would receive the ball, Manchester United would aim to create this right side overload. This right side overload was to uh, draw Chelsea's uh, backline and midfielders towards the right where Manchester United could employ quick shifts of play. You can see here we have the position of Luke Shaw, Ganacho, uh, Bruno Fernandes and Hoyland also dropping towards that side, creating a four-man against Sterling and Mark Kukurela. This is the reason why Chelsea were really struggling in the first half down the right-hand side. Since Kukurela would be pushed out of position, Bruno Fernandes would, be, would uh, escape his marker in uh, Caicedo, and Amrabat would receive the ball and immediately shift the play to Anthony, who had time and acres of space in the right wing. McTominay would play this underlapping run the, and try to attempt those runs in the half spaces. You can see here, Anthony is receiving the ball, Colwell is in a 2v1 situation and uh, Colwell wins the aerial duel but if he failed to win the duel then Anthony would have just played the ball. So Anthony fails to square the ball to Rasmus Hoyland and attempts a shot on goal which Sanchez save. And uh, this is the reason why Manchester United should have really killed this game in the first half. Here, you can see how uh, Colwell is reluctantly, uh, he did not move fast to close in Anthony, and now Anthony has time to link up with McTominay and attack Chelsea's left hand side. So in some instances, Dalo will be the one making this underlapping run as he made runs from defense to attack. The main strength of Dalo in this position is that he would play these cutbacks and Bruno Fernandes had chances outside the 18-yard space to just shoot on goal but he, he 
uh, shot the ball out of target and uh, Manchester United failed to capitalize on that opportunity. We started to see Cole Palmer now pushing forward to try and press and this is when we saw Amrabat dropping deep to form a back three with Luke Shaw and Dalot all moving high up the pitch. So you can see here, look at the position of Amrabat. Amrabat has seen that uh, Palmer and Jackson are pressing both uh, Maguire and Lindelof and Amrabat has decided to drop in between the two centre backs. Now Manchester United have numerical advantages in midfield and now Luke Shaw. Bruno Fernandes and Ganacho are forming that diamond down the right hand flank against Chelsea. And now Lindelof can receive the ball, especially Maguire. Maguire will receive the ball in time and space. And you know Maguire likes to carry the ball forward. So Maguire will carry the ball forward, draw in a midfielder from Chelsea, and then create these overloads by playing a ball either to Anthony or Scott McTominay. And this now will give Manchester United great strength since Manchester United now will have the numerical advantage that they had in the middle part of the pitch. And the link-up play between Hoyland, who would flick on the balls to Ganacho, and Ganacho would attempt shots. We saw this in the first half, but Hoyland failed to have an easy tap-in. Now, also another thing to understand is that uh, when Chelsea decided just to press with one man, Jackson was not quite effective. And in some instances, Manchester United even uh, inverted both their fullbacks in midfield in Diego Dalot and Luke Shaw, creating as many as five players in midfield, destroying Chelsea's midfield overload. Here from the clip, you can see the position of Luke Shaw. Diego Dalot and Amrabat forming that trio in midfield and now Chelsea are looking to chase shadows in midfield. Here Manchester United would receive the ball and easily play through Chelsea's midfield and this saw uh, Moises Caicedo and uh, Enzo Fernandes had a very terrible game mm -hmm. since Manchester United would easily play through Chelsea and this occurred around the 60th minute in the first in the second half. So let me have my talking points on how I believe Chelsea were. First of all, the pivots of Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo were so poor, especially during the build-up uh, time. Disasi playing was very horrible. Disasi is not comfortable on the ball. He's sloppy while tracking runners, and I believe Badiashele would have been better. Uh, Colwell is not a left back. Honestly speaking, Colwell is not a left back. He doesn't play well there. He's so sloppy and he was sloppy for the second goal. Playing Kukurela at right back is also not good. Chelsea lacked an outlet down the right. And we saw the difference when Rhys James came in. Uh, Robert Sanchez made some good saves, but uh, his kicking was very poor. He put Chelsea under a lot of pressure, but I understand this as he was putting him in that pressure. Mikalo Mudrik, poor, poor, poor. Uh, other than the assist, he was not great at all in his finishing. He did nothing down, uh, down the left-hand flank. Nicholas Jackson, uh, I don't know what to say. The guy just keeps on missing chances. He missed uh, an easy tap-in. He missed an uh, easy free header in the far post. There's nothing more I can say about him. On the other hand, Manchester United were quite impressive. Scott McTominay managed to score a brace that uh, ensured the team secured the win. I don't believe Manchester United were that great. It's just because Chelsea were so poor, but they really, really turned up, especially in midfield with Amrabat. So uh, the noise that was around Old Trafford regarding to how Eric Ten Hag has lost the dressing room, regarding to how Manchester United are not backing their manager, will be silenced with this win they just had at Old Trafford. And Manchester United continue their excellent record against Chelsea, with Chelsea winning last at Old Trafford back in 2013. Eric Ten Hag will be delighted with the performance that his team showcased, and he will be very pleased with how his team came together amidst this uh, propaganda war created by journalists and managed to have convincing win and a resounding performance. Mauricio Pochettino, on the other hand, will have a lot of questions on his team, with a lot of fans questioning his ability to manage this team 
and a lot of pressure coming in for Chelsea who have just won 5 games out of 15 after spending a billion pounds. It's quite a problem at Chelsea. So the situation at Chelsea continues to get worse as fans have started to lose hope in this project thing that Todd Bowley had started to create. So now the, pro the owners is on Chelsea whether they will improve or whether they will just continue to have inconsistent performances. So before I even leave this analysis, if you want to understand, Chelsea have really had a problem defending set pieces. So if you want to really understand why Chelsea have this problem, click the next video and understand why Chelsea have these defensive issues all of a sudden. Thanks very much for watching this video.